This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Alperoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're going to kick off today's show with some exciting news about a new partnership that could bring more charging stations to businesses across Aotearoa, New Zealand. Enter Ampico, a UK software specialist, and Singer Electric, a Kiwi electrical solutions provider. They have announced a collaboration to build a nationwide managed EV charging network by the year's end. The software aids fleet in managing charging needs and can be operated with public charging stations with pay-per-use options. It also enables businesses to charge customers and visitors' cars. This partnership will significantly help large and small fleet operators stay charged up, promoting electric vehicle adoption as an alternative to smelly petrol and to diesel. Talking of charging, but in a completely different way, BYD has officially unveiled details of its first megawatt electric charging station for EVs, something it's calling its Super E platform. Reducing charging times by increasing charging station power has always been a big goal of automakers, and today's charging champs, complete with 350 kilowatt fast charging, can add around 11 or 12 miles of range per minute. But that's blown out of the water by BYD's newest platform which it claims can add 249 miles, 400 kilometres of range in just five minutes, utilising a 1,000 volt battery pack capable of charging at up to 1,000 amps, or if you prefer, 10C. BYD says that it plans on building 4,000 ultra-fast charging stations across China this year, capable of one megawatt charging speeds, and its two newest models, the Han L and Tang L EVs, already support this ultra-fast charging speed. A few months ago, we stopped covering Tesla and its CEO due to controversial statements and actions. However, this week, given the numerous stories involving the company and some targeted trolling in our comments, we decided to include a brief roundup. There have been targeted attacks on Tesla superchargers and stores this week where vehicles and charging stations have been destroyed and vandalized. The US government this week called that domestic terrorism. Meanwhile, an online hacker group claims to have hacked Tesla servers and is now actively doxing Tesla owners. We do not condone violence or vandalism, although we do encourage viewers who wish to peacefully protest Tesla and Elon Musk's actions to do so peacefully. As Tesla stock tanked due to protest selling this week, the US Commerce Secretary Howard Ludnick publicly told viewers to buy Tesla stock on Fox News, likely violating conflict of interest laws. The Financial Times also published a report this week that claims Tesla's accounting last year was inaccurate, with $1.4 billion in missing assets. Finally, a German poll into attitudes towards buying another Tesla, a poll which showed 94% of German respondents wouldn't buy another Tesla, suddenly received a quarter million positive votes from two IP addresses in the US in just a few hours after Tesla's CEO posted about it. The poll was subsequently ended early. Despite today's reporting, we intend to continue our previous editorial policy on Tesla, except in exceptional circumstances. As soon as Renault confirmed it would be bringing the Renault 5 back as an all-electric model, we've been eagerly awaiting the inevitable turbo variant. Those who grew up in the 1980s in Europe will know of the legendary status of the Renault 5 Turbo on the rally course and, of course, its subsequent production hot hatch variant you could buy. And while the term turbo is a bit of a misnomer in the EV age, Renault has confirmed that following a tease last year of a concept Renault 5 Turbo, it will bring the Renault 5 Turbo 3E to market in 2027 as a limited production super hot hatch. With an 800 volt battery pack, there's a 350 kilowatt DC fast charging capability, as well as twin rear in-wheel motors for 400 kilowatts at the wheels. And this means the Renault 5 Turbo 3E is going to be a collector's car. That and the fact that only 1,980 units will be made available. A tribute to the year 
year in which the original Renault 5 Turbo debuted. We can't expect any of these vehicle refinements in regular production Renault 5s, but I can honestly say this is a halo car I can truly get behind. While the majority of GM brands pulled out of right-hand drive markets nearly a decade ago, Cadillac has been a bit of an outlier, with strong sales in a handful of countries where people drive on the left, not the right. You've been able to get the Cadillac Lyric and Lyric V in some markets now for some time, and this week Cadillac confirmed two new models getting the right-hand drive treatment, the Optique and Vistique. Officially unveiled in Tokyo, Japan, right-hand drive variants of both models will launch in Australia and Ataro, New Zealand next year. For Cadillac, which has a growing market in both countries, the introduction of the Vistique will be quite interesting, as there aren't that many seven-seat EVs in either of those markets right now. We don't have pricing or launch details yet, but they are said to be coming closer to their official launch. Oh, and if you are in other right-hand drive markets, I'm afraid we don't know if either of those models will be coming to you. Watch this space, and I will, of course, let you know if that changes. The US is quite the metaphorical car crash right now, both in terms of what's happening on Capitol Hill, but also in what's happening in the auto industry. This week, a new study by the Repeat Project out of Princeton University issued a scathing verdict on plans by the US federal government to eliminate all tax credits for EVs and clean energy projects. In short, it warns the resulting drop in demand will dramatically harm EV adoption among some groups, but also endanger manufacturing jobs within the US. While politicians, especially the current US president, like to clump manufacturing together as one entity, it's worth noting that producing EV batteries require a particular set of skills that are very different to those used in a traditional automotive manufacturing setup. According to this report, EV demand is expected to decrease 30% by 2027 and nearly 40% by 2030 if those changes happen, which will slash EV market share. Additionally, the report says that the largest impacts of this change will be felt in traditionally Republican-leaning states where the majority of new EV factories currently exist. The US federal government may be continuing to target any attempts to make our society fairer and more equitable, but last week Toyota and EVgo announced the start of a new initiative designed to do that in the EV world. As we've covered plenty on this channel before, EV charging provision to date around the world has been anything but equitable, with many companies outright avoiding traditionally disenfranchised communities, often communities of colour, when installing new charging infrastructure. But as Toyota becomes surprisingly pro-EV, it's eager to ensure that everyone can drive electric. Its newest project with EVgo has seen fast charging stations deployed in neighbourhoods in Baldwin Park and Sacramento in California, neighbourhoods with high numbers of multifamily dwellings and restricted off-street parking. This isn't the first time EVgo has been involved in such projects. It's done similar things with GM in the past, but it is good to see more charging stations installed in communities that need them to enable them to accelerate the transition to electric. A common myth used to criticise electric vehicles is that batteries can't be recycled and end up in a landfill, a myth that we have busted so many times on this channel. EV battery packs are, as we've covered plenty, becoming easier and easier to recycle, and this week a team of researchers in China published details of a new NCM battery recycling process that they claim can extract 99.99% of all lithium, 97% of the nickel, 92% of the cobalt and 91% of the manganese in an NCM EV battery pack. Unlike traditional recycling methods, which use quite strong amino acids to leach out constituent parts for recycling, the new method uses what the team is calling a quote-unquote neutral leaching process. This process does use amino acids too, but I understand they're less complex, more environmentally responsible, and could help increase recycling throughput at facilities as it's quicker than traditional battery recycling methods. While it's still only in lab stages, if if this can be commercialised, it could be quite the breakthrough. If you've been paying attention to EV sales figures in the past few years, you might know that while some automakers had a great year last year, 
Some didn't. This week, new sales data comparisons showed just how large the distance between the firms that did well and those that didn't was, highlighting that last year BMW sold more electric vehicles than its rival premium German cohorts Audi and Mercedes-Benz combined. BMW sold nearly 368,500 EVs last year, and that's excluding its Mini and Rolls-Royce marks, while Mercedes-Benz only managed a shade over 185,000 and Audi managed 164,000. With BMW heavily leaning into its next generation platform, this year is looking like a good one for the brand and having driven BMW's latest models, I can attest they're pretty good. And finally for the segment, some more good news. Namely that if we all just put solar panels on the roofs of our homes and offices, we'd be living far more sustainably. Obviously, I'm going to assume that you already knew that solar panels can help reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, but a new study from the University of Sussex in the UK has laid it out very clearly. Taking in satellite data from around the planet, it uses sophisticated processing to determine that right now, in 2025, if we put solar panels on every roof that could actually accommodate them, we could eliminate all current fossil fuel electricity generation, reducing global temperature by 13 tenths of a degree Celsius. In addition, the study found that this dramatic adoption of solar would also mean it would account for two thirds of global electrical demand, with the final third met by other renewable sources of generation. Now, wouldn't that be a nicer world to live in? Before we get to the last two stories, I have my usual question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aldara, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with tons of information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes lots of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay those pesky RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. And now it's time for those last two stories. It has been a rough couple of months for the electric vertical takeoff and landing world, with not one but two of Germany's eVTOL companies going through some pretty tough times. But over in the US, eVTOL specialist Joby is having a far better time thanks to a new partnership between it and Virgin Atlantic. Announced midweek, the partnership will see Virgin Atlantic work alongside Delta and Joby to develop eVTOL air taxi services in the UK. Now, it's still early days and there's a long way to go, including finishing all of the airworthiness testing and commercial validation. But if everything goes according to plan, we actually could see some of the UK most congested areas get Eve VTOL air taxi routes. Not only could it link major metropolitan areas together, but it could also make it quicker to get from, say, Heathrow Airport to Gatwick without needing to get stuck on the hell that is the M25 or, or M3. And finally, I suspect if you're watching this show, you're already interested in the benefits that electric vehicles can offer us, whether we are at work or at play. And in the last decade or so, we've seen a true explosion in the number of EVs being used for off-road and recreational use, from chonky e-bikes through to dedicated all-electric dirt bikes. And that's shifted into the professional world of motorsport too, resulting in more thrills and a much less noise for fans and competitors alike. But just last weekend, the X Games, once a gold standard for extreme sports, announced its decision to ban electric motorcycles and e-bikes from its events. Its reason? Electric motorcycles and e-bikes don't fit with its focus of, quote, maintaining a level playing field, end quote. It's frankly truly sad to see what was once a super important extreme sports event take this stance, but it shows one thing I think very clearly. People are afraid of EVs because they show up petrol vehicles every single day. And on that note, we're done. Before I go, make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't yet, it's high time you switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week. But in the meantime, do check out the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge offerings on this same channel. He's always doing something that's well worth a look so make sure you have hit subscribe. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.